Hey, this is the... Eight. <laughs> Hold on a second. I was a little over-enthusiastic. you got to rein in the enthusiasm a little bit, even when you're talking about something as exciting as the fact that air has weight and takes up space, which is a very exciting topic when you think about it. Oh, by the way, I'm Brian, and this is the HVAC School Podcast. This is a quick episode, and the name of this quick episode is what I just mentioned, that air has weight and it takes up space, and that has a lot of ramifications for us in the work that we do every day, whether you know it or not. But before we get into that, I need to thank our sponsors, and our sponsors are Mitsubishi Electric Heating and Cooling, Carrier, the UEI Hub Smart Kit, Probes Kit, which is the thermal hygrometer kit, which is two of those, two temperature and humidity sensing thermal hygrometers that go in duct with nice quarter inch probes, as well as the pressure probes and the temperature probes. The pressure probes and temperature probes are called the Hub 4, and when you put all six of those probes together, you got yourself the Hub 6. You can find out more by going to ueitest.com. Refrigeration Technologies at refrigetech.com. We've been really enjoying the Viper spray cans. Actually, I have aerosol cans full of Viper cleaner, and I used it just yesterday to clean a, an evaporator coil in place. It has a really nice stream of cleaner that comes out. It does not have any nasty odors. It's neither acidic nor alkaline, so it doesn't attack the coil. It's not going to damage anything. A really nice product and does a good job. You do have to let it sit for a little bit, though. So you got to let it sit and foam for five or ten minutes to make it work properly. And that is Viper HD Cleaner from Refrigeration Technologies at refrigetech.com. And then finally, I have to mention my friends over at Air Oasis, makers of the Bipolar and the Nano products that I really believe in and I stand behind. And they're also making a new room air purifier that I really like. So you can find out more by going to airoasis.com to find out more about their products. Those guys make high-quality air purifiers made right here in America, airoasis.com. So now let's talk about what we want to talk about, the fact that air has weight and it takes up space. What do we normally measure? That's not a trick question. When we're measuring airflow, what do we normally measure? We normally measure CFM, right? We talk in terms of CFM. Sometimes we talk in terms of static pressure even, which is even more simplistic. But we're generally trying to find out what is the CFM that you're putting out of the air handler. So what is CFM? CFM is cubic feet per minute. That's the amount of space that the air takes up. So we accept that air is something. It is matter. It's not just a vacuum. It actually has some weight to it. There are molecules involved with air. And so... When we talk about it taking up space, we're saying that, all right, we're moving around these many boxes of air. In fact, when we say cubic feet per minute, CFM, you can imagine a cube, a one foot by one foot by one foot cube of air, a cardboard box, a one foot square or cubic cardboard box of air. We're moving around that many per hour. And you've probably heard the rule of thumb. If you haven't, then you should memorize this. 400 cubic feet per ton. So a ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour, 244,000 BTUs per day. And a CFM is a cubic foot per minute. And so you got to remember that it's a cubic foot per minute. It's not cubic foot per hour or anything like that. And so you're going to have to do a conversion if you want to match the two. But what it comes down to is is that we want about 400 CFM per ton. Now, is that always the case? Do we always want 400 CFM per ton on all equipment at all times? The answer to that is no, we don't. In some cases, we want a little less than that. In some cases, we want a little more. And there's reasons for that. But where we live here in central Florida and throughout the Gulf Coast states and even up the eastern seaboard, you get a lot of really high relative humidities. And that's a circumstance where you want to remove more moisture. And so we generally set our blowers to produce 350 cubic feet per ton, which means that per cubic foot of air, we're removing more heat per cubic foot, which means we're in a colder evaporator coil and we're able to pull a little more moisture out. And so that helps us with what we call a sensible heat ratio. And I've talked about this in other podcasts. But the point being, when you move fewer CFM per ton, fewer boxes of air per ton of cooling capacity or heating capacity that you have, then in the case of cooling capacity, you run a colder evaporator coil. And that means that your coil is further below dew point and the air is moving over it more slowly, which means that you have longer dwell time, which means you pull out more moisture. So said simply, lower CFM per ton equals more moisture removal, which is why we use 350. But for most of the country, we talk in terms of 400 CFM per ton as sort of being our standard. But there's a couple other factors here. So when you're up in the mountains, say, you know that the air is thinner. You've heard that before. Up in the mountains, uh, the thin air. Well, when you're in thinner air, the air is less dense. And that means that there is fewer pounds of air per cubic foot. The density changes. So in general, when we have 400 cubic feet per minute, that's 400 cubic feet per minute per ton, and we see that standard air weighs 0.075 pounds 
per cubic foot. So for every box of air, every cubic foot of air, it weighs 0.05 pounds. And so if you do the math there, you multiply the 400 cubic feet per minute, multiply that times 0.075 pounds per cubic foot, that's equal to 30 pounds per minute per ton of air. So if we have a 350 CFM per ton, then it's going to be lower than that. But if you're working on the 400 CFM per ton, then it's going to be 30 pounds per minute per ton. So that's a pretty easy thing to remember. So if you have one ton of capacity, that means you need 30 pounds per minute. If you have two tons, it'd be 60 pounds per minute. You get the point. Pretty easy math to do. And so that's how many pounds of air we need. And those pounds per minute is what we call mass flow rate. We talk about moving heat in and out of a coil. What we really care about is how much mass there is to the air, how much weight there is. And for those of you who we've talked about this previously in the podcast, but really mass is the amount of inertia that an object has. Weight is affected by gravity. And so you can kind of say on earth, you can say mass and weight fairly interchangeably, but it does change with altitude. So mass changes less. And so in general, we'll call it mass flow rate. We don't call it weight flow rate. That's the mass of the air, the inertia of the air. And so when you have a box of air, you're assuming that it's going to be 0.075 pounds per cubic foot, standard air conditions, but that doesn't always stay the same. As an example, I was recently doing some testing. We were seeing that in where we are in Central Florida, inside the building, in general, people like to keep it 75 degrees, 50% relative humidity. I don't know why I said in Central Florida, that's pretty universal. Well, at 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity, the air does not weigh 0. 0.0750, it weighs 0. 0.0731 which means that the amount of density that you get, the mass flow rate, isn't exactly the same as it would be if you're using the standard air equation, the old 400 CFM per ton, figuring that you have 30 pounds per minute per ton. So if what we really care about is the pounds of air that we're moving, then why do we talk in terms of CFM? Well, that's an interesting question, one that I don't necessarily have the answer to, but the reason probably is that when we're dealing with fans— a fan doesn't depend on the weight of the air. So a fan is going to move the same volume of air regardless of its density. And when we measure airflow with a rotating vane anemometer, you've seen them, they have a little fan that spins, you hold it up, that measures the volume of air, so the boxes of air, independent of its density. And so when we have a blower, let's say it's a blower and it's running at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to move the exact same CFM when it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, regardless of the density, regardless of the relative humidity. And so that's probably why we generally talk in terms of CFM, because that's what the blower affects. But when we think about a coil, for example, how much air is going over a coil, the coil doesn't really care so much about the volume of air. It cares about how many molecules. What is the overall mass of the air? And so the coil cares about the mass flow rate, but your blower can only produce a fixed volume flow rate. And so what do we have to do? Well, what it comes down to is we have to make adjustments for our volume flow rate in order to achieve a fixed mass flow rate. And this is important in a couple different situations. It's important when you get to altitude. So when you have air that is thinner air, we're kind of looping back to that. When air is thinner, that means that it's less dense. I mean, we know that. Getting into altitude, it's less dense. And so that means you need more of it to achieve the same mass flow rate. You have to correct for the change in altitude. So you just give an example. So 70 degrees at sea level would be kind of a standard air equation. But if you go up to that same situation, so you have 70 degree air and you go up to 5,000 feet, well, now you have to correct using a 0.83 correction factor at 5,000 feet of altitude, which essentially means that you have less mass for the same amount of volume, but your blower is not going to adjust. Your blower is going to keep there moving the same CFM. And if you measure the CFM coming out of your blower, you're going to measure the same thing that you measured before. You're not going to see a difference there. And your vein anemometer is going to measure the same. But the fact is that you're not going to be producing the same number of molecules. You have fewer molecules per cubic foot. Again, I keep restating the same thing, but just so you can get a picture of this. You have the box, which is the volume, and you have how much stuff is in the box, and that's the density, which turns into mass, right? Mass flow rate. And so that blower keeps moving the same amount of boxes of air, but what's in the box decreases when you go up into altitude. And that makes a big difference with the way that the equipment operates. Rubber meets the road. We could have a system in Florida where we have relatively high air density because we're at sea level, and it could work great at 350 CFM per ton. You take that same unit at 350 CFM per ton and put it up in the mountains of Colorado, and you'll notice that the system starts to freeze. Why is that? Well, because you need more 
molecules that's moving the same amount of boxes, but there's not as much stuff in the box. And when you're measuring using different methods, so if you're measuring with, say, a pedo tube, or if you're measuring static pressure, for example, those are density-dependent measurements, meaning that those measurements change as the density changes. When you measure with something like a vein anemometer, for example, one of those spinning things that you hold up to the vent, those do not change, meaning they're going to measure volume. They're going to measure the number of boxes and not what's in the box, whereas a static pressure probe in a manometer is going to measure what's in the box. A hot wire is going to measure what's in the box because it actually is contingent on the number of molecules. So there's a lot of different little things like this when you talk about density-dependent versus density-independent measurements, and it really just all comes down to what are you measuring? Are you measuring the number of boxes, or are you measuring how much stuff is in the box? What are you moving? Are you moving boxes, or are you moving the stuff that's in the box? Those are all, all key things to think about. And the same concept goes into when you talk about compressors, for example. A compressor, an old reciprocating compressor, you imagine that piston going up to its top point, it has a fixed volume in there. And so it's going to move a fixed volume of refrigerant regardless of the density, regardless of the mass. And that has a lot of ramifications in how the refrigerant circuit operates, which we're not going to go into now. But the main thing to know is, is that air takes up space. That's the volume and it has weight. That's the mass affected by gravity. That's how we get weight. So hopefully that's helpful to you. And especially if you're in a circumstance where you wonder why you see a lot more undercharged systems freeze up in Florida, whereas in Colorado, you're much more likely to see a system freeze up because of low airflow. Both things apply, but it does vary from place to place because up there you got to get your CFM over 400 CFM per ton in order to move the same amount of stuff in the box. Hopefully that's helpful. All right, well, thanks for listening. And as always, you can find all of our podcasts by going to bluecollarroots.com. You can find our daily tech tips by going to hvacrschool.com. I appreciate you, and we'll talk next time on the HVAC School Podcast. (laughs) 